So based on, on your discussion, it looks like you are uh, energetic and woke up to some extent. Yeah. <laughs> you had enough rotation on the weekend. It's not never enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, so concentrate your memories first. I'm going to ask <laughs> some questions. Hoping for for. Uh, a minimum of interruptions. So, what are we doing? In, oh, yeah, that's the best answer today. Okay, we do here. And uh, predicting future of what? Um, right now, in this uh, vicinity. Vibration. Vibrating. Vibrating molecules, yeah. You're predicting that molecules will vibrate. Yeah. And um, is there anything why we are not happy with uh, Sir Isaac Newton? Why we are not happy with just uh, classical path approximation or assuming that all ions are point charges? What is wrong with this? Because it's so small that it's uh, experienced quantum effect. And which quantum effect is. Uh, Molecules or vibrating atoms experience. In, in, any ideas from from your other classes, from uh, maybe in lab experience? Is there anything quantum about atoms? Not electrons, but nucleons. I'm also trying to, to, to come back and then to hope. Mm. Which experimental techniques allow to look at properties of atoms? Of vibrating atoms, of the vibration of atoms? IR and IR. Yeah, yeah, so IR. And um, is there any reflect any consequence? Of nuclear properties onto visible uh, UV visible spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good guess. So um, we, we will cover it partially in class, but we may want to discuss it right now. The uh, UV visible spectroscopy is typically transitions between electronic states of more. But if there are, let's say, some super simple molecule where only two electronic states, occupied and unoccupied, help to generate this UV spectrum. If you do your experiment with fine resolution, you will see that there are much more features. Even if there is only one electronic transition, there will be additional features. Because each electronic level, so to say, has a substructure of uh, sub levels related to nuclear vibrations. And they, um, if you do it at high temperature, it will be just room broadening. But if you cool it down, instead of having one transition, uh, one peak on spectrum from one electronic. Uh, one pair of electronic levels, you'll see resolved lines. And those will be manifestation of uh, quantum properties of, of, of nuclei. So if um, your molecule is, uh, is um, in absolute zero, right? but you can excite from ground electronic Excited electronic, and then to some sub levels where nuclei is getting excited more and more. So, this is the one of the connections to real life, I see. Maybe there, there are more. But uh, another, uh, so this is something one can see, but what comes out of instrument. So, 
nuclear substructure of UV is uh, spectral. Another uh, thing that uh, you already you have seen that ground state of a stimulator is never absolute zero, it's a little above. So it's zero point vibrations. There are some um, effects where it helps a lot. Who needs, who needs zero point vibrations? Did any of you heard about zero, zero uh, vibrations? No? Okay. So, there was uh, nuclear degrees of freedom. Experience quantum features because they are like particles. And you already know from the uh, solution of time independent general equation is that lowest energy is, is not zero. So the, uh, the wave function of the lowest state is not a point charge, but it is distributed. Okay? So in average, position is zero, but um, position squared, the, the um, deviation from zero is, from, from, uh, is, is not zero. There was some history, which means that there is some average vibration. So um, there is, I do not recall immediately some bright and impressive experiment that shows it directly. But if there is a very important consequence of this uh, zero uh, motion. If we have so many molecules and atoms everywhere, typically we, we are not in vacuum environment. Any of um, object that we study is either sitting on a so it's substrate or uh, is found in the solvent or in a gas phase it collides with others. And even if we are at zero temperature, the degrees of freedom which we measure on any experiment do interact with the rest of the human freedom, which we form this uh, small oscillations all the time, even at the zero temperature. And due to interaction with uh, this uh, zero order vibrations, there is no excited state in the universe that will stay excited forever. And this interaction with uh, zero vibrations will always lead to a relaxation from excited to zero bound. Therefore, if you are not doing uh, excitation, if you are not heating or kicking or urinating by weathers, all molecules are in, in ground state. Because Everything around performs this zero vibrations and provides a rotation chain. Okay. Good enough to motivate uh, heavy effort and suffering of math. So Please. Well, it, it would be great if you bring uh, homeworks on uh, Wednesday, but uh, do not overwork. Do not uh, put all your intellectual strengths and all your precious time in it. Just dedicate some time and try to. Uh, please prepare all your uh, intellectual strengths to, um, if you organize your time right now, if you are um, as regular people like we could as everything at last moment Pre prepare to have active um, Wednesday night preparing slides and submitting them uh, no you have all, also you have Thursday right you're submitting slides by Thursday night okay then like is easy it's, it's enough time this is really important thing and uh, as soon as we are done with it, uh, our strengths of efforts we apply, we'll 
I wouldn't say it will be much easier to the rest of the course, but it will stop growing. So we are coming to a culmination. Success in this, then the rest is uh, a little dumb. Just to determine the uh, success in everything. Okay. So, we already declared that our goal is to predict the future okay, for oscillating mode. But if we prepare our molecule for the vibration degree of freedom, described by harmonic oscillator in one of the eigenstates, will we get any dynamics, any uh, non trivial future? Ah, so I, I came to the same situation when, when everyone is, uh, is frozen. It's, uh, probably it's a bad formulation of the question. So, and before we do a uh, reasonable discussion, there is no reason to go into this question. So, in the harmonic oscillator chapter, we're going to go through the same, very similar pathway as we did for particle networks. So what was the um, observation for the dynamics part, where we sort of make that expectation value of position oscillating? How does it depend on initial condition? What was the key word for, for initial condition? When we explored, uh, you remember this, with like a bounce and force and value of the I'm inviting you to browse your memories. So um, let me simplify the, the question. There are two opportunities. Uh, suppose we know eigenstates of a quantum system. In one case, we are uh, preparing the quantum system either in ground or excited, or second excited, and then let it go and see, will it perform any motions? In other case, we are preparing superposition by different proportions simultaneously at ground and excited. In which case, the dynamics will be more uh, fun. More dynamics will be more dynamic. If system is, is in one of the eigenstates, or in the in case is, if system is in the superposition of, uh, of several eigenstates. You say non-trivial? Non-trivial, yes. Superposition? Yes. So um, this is kind of take-home message for the, for the whole course. If you prepare uh, your quantum system to reside in one of the eigenstates, if you neglect interactions with substrates, so it will stay there forever. You know, it is an approximation, but it will stay in our machinery, it will stay there forever. And there, the dynamics will include nothing but accumulation of phase, but no change of expectation value of position or momentum or some more advanced things. Right? So the dynamics for eigenstates is very boring. There is no reason to study dynamics for it. But as soon as uh, one prepares a superposition of uh, several excited states at the same, uh, or several eigenstates at the same time, then there will be something interesting. And uh, in most of the realistic uh, systems in, in real life, uh, when we perform measurements, system is brought into superposition. Otherwise, nothing will. Make sense? So this is a strategic goal for this chapter. We're not going to um, get it very quick. Well, you can get it very quick uh, with a computer program, where you just change potential, create non-equilibrium initial position, and then it goes on. 
but for pen and paper, it's uh, still some mathematical work. But the goal is to prepare superposition of several uh, eigenstates and see how it will develop in time. Make sense? So um, we already done this uh, time independent choosing the equation for the oscillator, and we did it with help of weather operators, which were uh, a short. So we found that one cannot go lower than the basement. Applying annihilation operator to the ground state gets zero. And through this uh, formulating this idea as differential equation, we found ground state. Then we uh, apply raising operator and generated first, excited second, excited. And then um, we split the responsibility of normalizing them. So it's, uh, Part of the homework. So by now, and uh, also it's a part of a homework, but uh, I invite you to trust that the uh, eigenfunction that you have found match the time independent student equation for harmonic state. So we have this solution. We already have the states. And it would be really cool to prepare initial state of a system as. 50-50 like of ground is excited, or maybe 33-33-33 uh, 30, 30, 30, 30 of ground first and second excited, and see how it will affect the change of probability distribution, the change of observables in time, if any. But we are postponing it. We're not doing it right now. It is only just uh, some fairy tale and story to um, if you're thinking about a course at your free time, then you can uh, develop this seed of thought. If you don't, uh, uh. so weather rivers. Allow to jump up and down. The ground state is Gaussian, is uh, normalized. And we have summarized, this means that we, we have summarized uh, our effort in a uh, week and a half of previous exercise in the um, in this slide. So we have uh, eigen states which are converted from each other by raising the gradient, by uh, a human, um, and due to normalization, the application of raising operator to lower state will give the normalized next state with larger number, but multiplied by effect, just by nature of this operator. And if you want normalized states, we do want to apply raising operator and divide by a uh, factor which will coincide with index of the state. Okay. By the way, in um, this is slide from last time, and here should be plus one. Uh, I found the error myself. Do you like this matrix? Or uh, does it? Uh, <coughs> what, 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 <laughs> I, is there are not many people in the world who may uh, feel empathic to uh, matrix, but. What do, you, what do you see, what do you think about uh, when you look at it? Well, one, one of the thoughts is like, break is in 30 minutes. I do not need to suffer too long. <laughs> Um, this is the summary of uh, what we are going to get to today. 
So it's uh, expected out outcome of the of the uh, of the meeting. And remember when we were just finishing the chapter of uh, part of the books, there was one special subject. <clears throat> what was the last subject before we started from my school year? What do you mean? Well, like, um, not free space, but like different type, different sizes of boxes? No, no, the, different, thank you for memorizing things. Uh, different sizes of the boxes are great. But later, after we, had, we were done with different sizes of boxes, there was one more meeting when we, we were trying to get rid of which functions and formulate Schrodinger equation in discrete form, in the space of expansion of wave functions in, in the um, in expansion of our basis of eigenstates. state. Sense the arrangement? No, just Schrodinger. Well, this matrix well, it can be also done in this basis, but Schrodinger equation in discrete representation. It does anything good? Yes. No. You don't read your notes during the night together with you. Um, I wasn't really going to say. <clears throat> so the Schrodinger equation is good, but if we are planning to do actual practical calculations, it's very hard because uh, uh, it deals with continuous wave functions in space. And if you are going to describe them numerically one would need many many points to discretize a function we are doing it in the lab but generally it is very expensive approach so it's good for education but not for any problem i remember i was asking this question and, and ben did answer what is basic state so what is it um deja vu basis set is like a approximation of Approximation of coefficients. It's not wrong. Okay, thank you. So um, one can represent any function as a summation. So a known function can be represented as summation of known functions with certain coefficients. And typically, if we work with particle in the box, these known functions are eigenfunctions for particle in the box. When we will be dealing with harmonic oscillator, the known functions will be set of eigenstates with functions for harmonic oscillator. But instead of uh, working again and again with this continuously distributed wave functions, we may just add them together and put coefficients like c sub 0, c sub 1, c sub 2, to represent how much each of the eigenstates contributes to a superposition. And if there is some dynamics, if there are some external derivations, instead of writing down Schrodinger equation for wave function itself, one can write Schrodinger equation only for coefficients. So one can convert from continuous basis to discrete basis. And it is uh, possible because of uh, these functions are orthogonal. We didn't prove it for eigenstates of harmonic oscillator, but they are orthogonal as well. Good idea for next year. So, in case we will go onto the way of converting our consideration from continuous wave function to discrete expansion coefficients, one would need to express all operators, including Hamiltonian operator, 
in the space of these discrete bases. Then try to write down, verbalize and write down this uh, uh, sentence. So let's let's read who wrote what. Bill? Uh, Matthew. Sorry. Oh. What was the question again? So um <laughs> write a note after what I've told uh, a minute ago. I'll try to do it's well, I better let you express it and then we will uh, refine it. Michael, did you? Hmm? My crackers. But do you have general plan of how to avoid it? Did you? Helen? Are you talking about how the eigenstates, or how these eigenstates convert into a space? Yes, this, this, this is correct. This is correct, but not the, the whole idea. Uh, ben? But any maybe ideas how how you interpret it? No. Thoughts? Uh, just uh, in order to uh, discretize Schrodinger's equation, we need to discretize the Hamiltonian first. Okay, so you hear each other. No one told wrong things. We just need to put together this building blocks. So we have expectations and promise that. Going, I, I cannot summarize it in one sentence myself. You, you better do it. I will tell in several sentences. So we do have a uh, promise that going from continuous bases into discrete bases will be very helpful in, in computing things much quicker, more efficient. And if we are going into discrete bases, continuous wave functions are replaced by a set of coefficients. So that these coefficients will tell how much each of eigenfunction contributes to actual actual state, initial state or state of some kind. And if we are practicing this idea, we need to convert each of the operators, which originally are differential operators, into matrices. So we need to convert differential operators into matrices by going from continuous to discrete phase. Is it clear or should, should we discuss it more? Anyone requesting more discussion? No, okay. And uh, we, we are going to start from simple to more complicated. So the uh, creation and uh, operator in the basis of eigenstates of harmonic oscillator will look as the matrix with main diagonal is zeros and uh, lower sub-diagonal going as growing square roots of natural numbers. So if you, if you accept it and see where it comes from, you're done. If not, I'm going to quickly go over derivations. So this all is done in order to uh, bring our activity closer to uh, prediction future for real systems in efficient way. You already experienced that this math is not always pleasant, not because it is uh, someone designs it to torture uh, people, but objectively. And uh, one of the technical goals is to find shortcuts all the time. So this is one of the shortcuts. Whew. So here are your eigenstates, right? And eigenenergies start from one cup of uh, h bar frequency and then go by increments of h bar omega. 
this is our strategic goal for the rest of the chapter. We are going to represent wave function, general wave function, initial conditions, as superposition of eigenstates of harmonic oscillator that we already found with some coefficients. And then as time passes by, this expansion coefficients uh, will accumulate phase, right? Based on our protocol to predict the future. And later on, we can plug in this time dependent uh, wave function into protocol for computing expectation values, observed. So before this five sub M were eigenstates of particle in the box. Now they will be eigenstates of harmonic oscillator. Gaussian, which last lecture was really successful. Everyone was sure uh, this stuff. So those will be here. And then if we add together several of them and plug them into, they will accumulate phase. And uh, we will be able to follow what happens in a uh, real uh, way. I was supposed to write it down myself, otherwise it's too boring. So, acting on the ground state, we get first state. But if we need to express first state, we can tell it as a a dagger acting on the drum stick, no factors. Now, if we act with raising operator, creation operator on the first state, first excited state, we are getting second state multiplied by square root of two. And uh, if we are very picky, it comes out from normalization requirement. So, but if our goal is to get the second excited state, we write it down as I2 equals A dagger applied by 1, 1 plus square root of 2. Right? So, this is what, what was promised a long time ago. We are going from the first to the second. But what is the first state? What is first eigen state? It's this one. You can plug in, right? So it will be one over square two, a dagger, and then instead of the box, we write a dagger to phi zero, which uh, can be interpreted as going one step up from ground state and going one step more. So just Climbing two steps, right? So if we are applying raising operator to state I2, it will be square root of 3, state I3. So if you practice the same uh, inversion, so we actually need I3. I speed should be one for the square root of three. A dagger I two. But what is phi two? It is what we defined here. So we can plug in this expression into here. So we do. 1 over square root of 3, square root of 2, and actually square root of 1, multiplied by a, 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 bigger, 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 applied to the final. So a, a, a is not a defect of speech, it's just uh, a bigger q. So we claim three times, right? three steps up. And because of this normalization beam, uh, we also need to divide uh, by appropriate factor each time. 
and since these factors uh, grow up uh, linearly, it will be pretty sort of state in the square of one, two, three. If you go higher up, it will be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So, how do you call multiplication of uh, one times two times three times n minus one times n? In fact, or yes, excellent. Wasn't in surrounding complicated. Good. So generally, you do have procedure to generate any of the excited state by applying raising operator so many times to the ground state as uh, which state you need, which excited state you need, right? Yeah, this is just the same thing uh, in a better calligraphy and. Uh, if you are going to state number L, you can uh, express it as applying bigger operator n times the ground state and then dividing it by n factorial. Right. So we are done with one goal, but now we need to go to discrete, discrete space. We already assume that, not assume, we know for sure that the eigenstates are known. And we hope to get rid of this uh, continuous function, differential operators, because uh, we already suffered from them. We were taking derivatives and integration so many times previously. There is a way to get rid of it and, and deal with much shorter basis. So the main idea that uh, you have expressed I will give up writing today just show show this. So the main idea, well maybe it's better if I will. I'm going to to perform writing this equation myself and uh, talking with this uh, once again. So main idea that we put a lot of effort to write down that you have in your own verbalizations is that if you are going to discrete space, operators need to be converted into matrices. In some sense, operator converts state M into state M if it is an operator in matrix form. Um, let's do connection. Just on the previous slide, we were converting the ground to first excited. First excited into second, right? So, uh, operator general operator is was abstract. is a tool that converts eigenstate M into eigenstate M with intensity, with probability corresponding to matrix element. The, the A on the left side is supposed to have a plus, it just didn't show up, correct? Yes. It's, uh, we need a new touch. See? And A. So those are uh, bra and cap eigenstates. And if the operator is converted into a matrix, then elements of this matrix are old matrix elements. So uh, Later on, the procedure to find an observable can be cast in terms of matrix elements. So one can do all quantum theory without the functions at all. 
we, we just need to believe in their existence and have matrix colors. Okay. So we will start of finding matrix elements of the uh, raising operator, which will be really easy and you have seen how it looks like. And later on, we will set up matrix elements. We will represent in matrix form all operators that I need for harmonic oscillator, like raising, lowering, position, momentum, energy, uh, kinetic energy, potential energy. And then we will do quantum mechanics without, without weight functions. Okay. Only in matrix expansion functions. Okay, so how do we do, how do we find this uh, matrix element? We already know a property that either acting on the operator uh, on the on the statement is the equal to square root n plus one n plus one. Right? We know. Find error for uh, find errors for this operator. I hope there is no error here. So we do want to get a read of wave functions. So we multiply from the left by bra. What are we going to apply? How do we complete erasing, getting rid of wave functions? What does it mean if we see by the way this curve can be put on what um, how do we interpret? Integral by sub m star by sub n one dx and uh, we apply we practice the property of orthogonality right so that product product and integration of eigenstates should give us either one if these two numbers are equal or zero if they're different right uh, we already took care of it by practicing normalization. So these wave functions are normalized. If it, it coincides, it will be one, for sure, guaranteed. The only little trouble is that here we have n plus one instead of n. So we need to write that it will be, it will be one if m equals n plus one, and it will be zero if uh, m is not equal. What is it in code? What can we do? So, in all cases, when this equation is not satisfied, the matrix element will be zero. In most cases, it will be zero. So, it will be non zero only if m is equal to n plus 1, or if uh, n equals m minus. But it will be it will be n number. By this operation, we get rid of wave functions. So it will be either zero or one, and we can 
uh, summarize it in form of delta m comma n plus one. So it will be uh, multiplied by square root of n plus one. So in fact, we already do have matrix uh, matrix element. So it will be matrix if the uh, if it will be like m n, it will be a diagonal matrix. But if m n plus one, it will be uh, matrix with non-zero elements on the sub diagonal. And here are the values: square root of n plus one. Therefore, it starts with two. Square root of two, square root of three, square root of five, square root of four. The summary of of this mean. You saw this matrix, this uh, sub diagonal uh, progression, starting from square root of two. More. I will show it uh, in a couple of minutes as, as a last slide. Good. Now, what if we express what we express our uh, creation operator? As we were planning to do. Summation M, M. Now instead of matrix element, we take our M, M. I will write delta M comma N plus one, multiply square root M plus one. And then by definition of operators here I write M. M. Why I'm doing it? Because I do want to express uh, operator not only as a matrix form, but also in direct notation with this uh, cat and bra. So, um, how do we process? How do we process expressions when we do see summation and delta function? What do they do to each other? What some sign does to delta function? Does it make an integral? It's my favorite part of the class. I can remember myself in the kindergarten. Mm -hmm. I will do something that hopefully you will remember forever. So let me uh, redraw. So summation. Is a hungry snake. Delta is a little rabbit that runs away. So summation it's delta. Do it. Actually, they uh, they cancel each other. If you do have summation and delta with some indices meeting each other. It will, this construction will parse only specific elements from this progression. Parse, select. So delta means that most of the terms in this summation will be zeros. Right? Right? Only one will be non zero or whatever. Very few will be non zero. Which ones will be non zero? Only in case if m equals n plus one. So we do remove summation over, over m, we do remove delta function, and we replace this. M symbol to n plus one. Then we do have only summation uh, left over n, and it will be conversion from n to n plus one with this factor, which can be interpreted like any state number n will be converted to state n plus one with the factor. So this is a Dirac notation 
which is equivalent to matrix notation. It's just storing, writing down matrix in, a, in, in the algebraic form. But in this, operate, in this operator, and later on you will see in this uh, notations, we do not have differentials anymore. So if we hate integrating and differentiating, we can convert into this matrix form. Okay. So we already got it. Matrix element of uh, equation operator is uh, sub diagonal with uh, square root of this stuff. Um, oh, we are over time. Suppose that I was writing line by line, but uh, it is what you were expecting. So zeros. The main diagonal, and here is square root of n plus one. Okay. Uh, I borrowed two minutes from your time to return some time. Meeting is done. Looking forward to see you on uh, Wednesday. Is it pretty not here? Mm -hmm. This morning she was here after. Last night she was here.